Hey there, welcome back. This is the last video that I've got planned for our Chapter 2 Research Methods course. If there's something more you want to see, of course, drop me an email. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is measuring association between two variables. And in this case, we often find ourselves wanting to know if one thing and another thing are related, right? Is the number of hours you study related to your grades? Uh, is the price of our item that we're trying to sell related to the quantity that we're going to sell? We want to know if those two things are related and in what the nature of that relationship is. So in this case here, I've got high temperature, daily temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, and the corresponding number of cases of water that were sold on that day. And we kind of want to know, you know, do we sell more water when it's hotter outside? Pretty logical question. So when we ask these types of questions, we usually answer them by following a relatively set protocol. We usually do a plot first. Visually, can we see a relationship? Then second, we calculate the correlation coefficient and the measure of covariance to see mathematically if there does appear to be a relationship. So I'm going to start off with showing you how to do the chart. To do the chart, we highlight the data that we're interested in, including the heading. Then under insert, we look for the dots, right? This is a scatter chart. We don't want them connected with a line. We want it to look like this, a series of dots where we can sort of see one variable on the X, one variable on the Y, what is the relationship between those two things? And if I click on those, if I click on that chart, this comes up automatically. Looks pretty good, right? I want to talk about some of the formatting that I'm really particular about. And a couple of these things come from some important experiences in my life, uh, which is that you will make a lot of charts. I have made a lot of charts. Then I go back till I look at my chart, and sometimes I don't know what I've done, right? If you just see this chart, bottled water sales, if you don't have this data next to it, you actually don't know what it is. Well, what is here on the, on the y-axis? What is here on the x-axis? When you make a chart, you label it all. You make a title that tells you what's in the chart, and you label it so that you can tell, anybody can tell by looking at that chart what's in it. So I want to start with this title, bottled water sales in cases, right? That's helpful, but if I open this in six months, I'm not going to know what the heck I did, right? So I'm going to change this to bottled water sales at different temperatures, at different outside temperatures, at different weather temperatures, right? Um, or in different weather, right? Just something so that you will know. Then the second thing is, is, you know, do we've got are these centigrade temperatures on the Y? Are these cases, you know, we don't know. So we've got to add some labels to these axes, to these axes. If you click somewhere on the graph, if you're on a PC, you'll get a nice little box up here that you can click some pluses to add things you want. But on a Mac, it's a little bit trickier. We want to go up here to chart design and then add a chart element. And what we want are axis titles or axis labels. And we'll need one on the horizontal axis and we're gonna need one on the vertical axis. And then to write, to type into these, you just have to highlight the data. And so here we have cases of water sold. And down here we have daily high temperature. Daily maximum temperature in Fahrenheit. Now we can take a look at it and see to ourselves or ask ourselves, at higher temperatures, do we sell more water? And it's looking like we do, right? The eyeball says yes. So then we might say, okay, the eyeball says yes. I see a relationship. Let's see what the math says. And we're gonna, we're gonna do calculate two things. We're gonna calculate the covariance, which is a linear measure of relationship. Um, large positive covariances, or a positive covariance, I guess I should start generally, is that those the variables tend to move together. At higher temperatures, we sell more water. If the covariance was negative, we would be selling more water at lower temperatures, right? Um, so to calculate the covariance, we start with an equal sign, and then type in the word co-var. 
and we get two choices. Covariance P, that's for the whole population, if you've got every day ever, 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 but we don't. We've got a sample of days, right? We've got some number of them, but it's not a full set of all the days ever. And so we have our two arrays. We have our temperature as our first array. An array is just a set of cells next to each other that you can highlight. And that's our first array. And then we put a comma in the second array. So what we're saying are, did the values in these cells vary with the values in those cells? Do they vary together? 12, right? It's a positive number. Um, and the larger positive number means a stronger correlation. The problem with the covariance is, well, what does it mean? What is that 12? 12 what, right? Because we're comparing temperatures and cases. The size of the covariance is going to be a function of the units in addition to the strength of the relationship. And so for that reason, a lot of people are much more interested in the correlation coefficient. And the correlation coefficient is nice because it's bounded. It will range between a negative 1 and a positive 1. 0 as a correlation coefficient means that the variables aren't related at all. So a correlation between 0 and 1 suggests they're positively related, where a correlation between 0 and negative 1 suggests that that relationship is negative. And so the phone format for that, or the function for that in Excel is Corel. Are these things correlated? Are the variables in this array here related to these? So eyeball says yes, covariance says yes, and correlation says, wow, yes, that's a very strong correlation. A correlation of one would mean that there was a perfect line between them all, right? And a correlation of 0.93 would suggest that those points lie really close to a line, that that relationship is strong and positive. I'm going to adjust those decimals. All right, so let me know if you have any questions, and, you know, happy calculating, as always.